Ladies and gentlemen, getting ready for the first heat race of the night. Thanksgiving Thunder, Bakersfield Speedway. Sorry, we had to do a re-intro for yes, our uh, we're right YouTube. now broadcasting live. And uh, what we also do is we put heat races up on our YouTube channel, which you can find at five. You can five at. You can find it at LBTV Productions on YouTube, or just look up Low Budget TV. You'll find a bunch of racing videos, as well as Low Budget TV on Facebook. You can find a lot of our footage there as well. Tommy, I believe it's time that we run through the starting lineup. On the pole, we have the number 11 machine, still fairly new to American stocks, that's Cody Johnson. To his outside, I would say far from being new to this car, the 114 of Rich Denman. Tommy, a longtime driver. He is, and you know what they say about Denman? He's a demon. <laughs> I finally gave it to you. Row number two, we have the 27C of Eric Simmental and the 86. Look at the pillar on that car. It's waving. <laughs> it is. That is a nervous car right now. The 86 of Mike Waters. It's warping. It is. The video graphics just aren't that good. No. I guess not. Row number three, the 22K, that's Kevin Johnson, and the number 99Z of Steve Johnson. And the final row in this heat race, the number 84 machine, Chris Settlemeyer, and the 53 of J.R. Daves. So these American stocks are going to be doing 30 main event laps here tonight. Of course, they're going to be the ones starting. Lighting the fuse for the two-day race. Yep. They're giving the one to go this time by 15 cars currently counted in the pit area. Now, given that this is a Friday event, it's not surprising to still see some trailers pulling in. So, really, our final car count is going to come once they throw the green flag for the main event. Now, these drivers are not at risk of missing the main event unless a hauler just pulled in with another seven of these cars. <laughs> not likely. So, these drivers, it's all about racing for position, Tommy. The yep. top 12 doing a redraw. Exactly. So, draw, redraw. These drivers all picked a pill to draw their heat race starting position. So, it still counts. If you finish in the top three here, you have a chance of starting on that front row. Yeah, so it means something if you're lucky enough. Well, the green flag's in the air. The first race of Thanksgiving Thunder is in the air. Well, hopefully it's on the ground, but we're racing. <laughs> hopefully it doesn't end up on the ground. Tommy, we saw some of these cars practicing. You can see how slick this track is right now. Contact in the middle. Contact or is that bump draft? Could have been help. Yeah, that 27 machine already throwing up some smoke. This track has been worked and worked and worked on all week long. You see there's plenty of moisture in it. Oh yeah. A lot of these American stock drivers are going to have to deal with it these first few heat races. That 22K, Kevin Johnson, he's going to jump to the lead. The car body may be a bit wrinkled, but the car is fast. Denman now sliding back to the second spot and really sliding around is that 27 machine, Simmental. And it's all the smoking like you'd mentioned. But Tommy, I believe that we referenced this plenty enough that these cars, if there's a division that there's smoke coming out of the car and you don't always worry about it, it could be this one. Yes. Just as long as the they're smoking, running. they're running. <laughs> Denman slides up. Johnson making his line work on this super slick and slippery track. Battle for the fifth position right now. It was Johnson to the inside of Johnson. 11, Cody Johnson graduated from the Mini Dwarfs and hopping into an American stock, getting his foot and hands dirty. We're going to see Mini Dwarfs tomorrow night. Yes, we will. A little bit of door banging. A lot of door banging. Three wide. Three and three wide and a turn number one more door slamming. Saddlemeyer going to make the move work. He's going to get the bumper from Johnson and Mike Waters takes out the tire. That 27 machine, just to reference what we've been talking about, as the caution does come out for the first time at Thanksgiving Thunder, it's, it's, he's good to go. He's looking in his rearview mirror and uh, if he has one. So Waters, Tommy, I don't know if that car shut off or if he got stuck on the tire, but he was having a good, okay, it did just get stuck. But that car was having a strong one and Waters, I believe, is one we've really seen pick it up in the latter half of the 2014 season. Yeah, he was strong uh, towards, like you said, midway point to the end of the season. 
always in contention and however he redraws could mean it big for him tonight as well. So yeah. We'll see. Now Man, these uh, these cautions are going to be critical for these drivers tonight because it's a one and done rule. That means Waters, his race has already done this heat race. We already talked about it. He doesn't have to worry about a B main, but he is going to have some work to do in that A main event. He's got the black flag. He doesn't want to respond to it, but he's going to have to. Find me a driver that wants to respond to that black flag. Yeah, exactly. So Kevin Johnson out to the lead here on lap number five. Yeah. Some of these drivers, Tommy, we are uh, familiar with. Settlemeyer. That team's been out here for a while. They've uh, been in all sorts of different divisions. We'll see another Settlemeyer in the mini stocks tonight. And these drivers were given the one to go, so they'll be getting going. But what's fun about these nationals events is you get to see drivers from all over California and sometimes even outside of the state coming out. You see on the back straight away a big, big billboard of Kevin Harvick, Bakersfield's Kevin Harvick, and we're in Bakersfield. The whole city, town. They're working on uh, making a Kevin Harvick day out here. Exactly. I believe it will be a city holiday. And it works at uh, the track is sponsored by Bakersfield. Makes perfect sense. You mean Budweiser? I'm sorry, Budweiser. <laughs> Bakersfield Speedway, sponsored by Bakersfield. <laughs> Kevin Johnson, our leader. That 27 is building more smoke, though. So it's strategy. Be. It's got to be strategy. We have two laps left in this heat race. Tommy, Steve Johnson in the 99Z machine. Not the car we're used to seeing him in. No, not at all. And I was going to mention, you're going to hear a lot of the Johnson family members here over the two-day weekend. A lot more to come. And don't be mistaken, there are a ton of family feuds out here. White flag in the air. Johnson has good bite out of turn number two. Denman was closing in. He's going to throw it into turns three and four, but it will be Johnston. You can see just how slippery this track remains right now. But if anything, this is a sign that by the time we get further into these heat races and closer to the main events, it's going to start uh, getting tacky. Yep. And these modifieds are going to be flying out here. You know, it's Sport Mod and A Mod event. He raced number two for the American Stocks on track. Getting ready. Seven American Stocks ready for this one. And we're going to do a bit of a starting lineup. We saw one of these drivers on the front row on the way up here to Bakersfield Speedway. It'd be the outside pole sitter, Mike Siders, in the number 25, 33 on the pole of Jeremy Watts. The 15D, Dakota Brown, he's a fast one out here. You're going to see a lot of him tonight. The number 19, Orange Car, I, I swear that thing looks like it's ready for a Sunkist sponsorship. <laughs> the number 19 of Kale Hosfeld. The number 3 of Brandon Ratcliffe. The number 7X, driven by Rhett Spillers and rounding out the field. He's a little shy. Johnny would if he could. Yeah, he's hanging back there a bit. I think he's just, I think he's keeping an eye on all of his competition ahead of him. You know, for uh, for American Sox, I, I'd say that last heat race was pretty tame. Yeah. Well, these everybody watching on XN, if they watched the Bakersfield Budweiser Nationals that happened about a little over a month ago, they could definitely tell these American Sox get down and dirty for their main events. That was uh, the Friday, that was one of the Friday night main events. Here we go. Field at the ready. We go green. And the front row didn't really want to. Dakota Brown did. I'm going to try three right at the start. Actually, oh! the 33 in the 15D got hooked. Now we're American stock away. racing. Jeremy Watts in the second spot. He had a problem getting started. Dakota Brown making a challenge for the second spot. And you see Ratcliffe taking a shortcut. He, he found all the dry dirt. He did. That's the first time I've seen dust all day. Ratcliffe is all over the place in that fourth and fifth place spot. Cider out in front in his number 25. Battle for the second spot. Watts getting some pressure from Dakota Brown in the 15D. 
I believe Dakota Brown was your runner up in the points this season at Bakersfield Speedway in the American Stocks. Just making the a move, champion. looking to the inside. It's still a really heavy pack behind them. Red Spiller's gonna. I thought he was gonna hit the tire, and then I thought he was gonna hit Johnny Wood. That battle for lead starting to pick up. Tommy Siders is losing time. Watts having to get on the brakes. That allows 15D Dakota Brown to look to the high side. Radcliffe on a mission as well. And some contact from fifth on oh, back. Oh, we're taking each other out over here. Into the tractor tire. Red Spillers flat dumps the 35 of Johnny Wood. And a battle for the lead. This is an American Stock Heat Race. Siders up on the high side. The 15D Dakota Brown down low. In we the go caution. yellow. Trying to take a look to see why we're yellow. Only thing I can think of is that that tire moved too far away from the groove. Yeah, and that would allow for John or Ratcliffe to cut that corner now. We don't want that to happen. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. He cut it anyway. Tommy, these heavy cars on this dirt track, it only makes sense that they'd have them go first, right? Yeah, and you know what? If you notice, this track is so watered down and so moist that these things are struggling. Struggling for grip out here. And that's why you saw Ratcliffe all over the place, Cider, and Brown for the lead, just slipping and sliding. So, so Dakota Brown does take over the lead. And as we talked about, it's it's a trip, Tommy, being able to drive down the freeway and see uh, one of these. This 25 machine we pretty much followed here. That was fun. That was fun to, and we've never seen this car before. It must no. be an out-of-towner. It was coming from south. South up to north. So we saw him on the nine on the number on the highway five. Heading That's north. the one. That's the one. Yeah. I was thinking there's two. Well, we hit two of them <laughs> on the way. So everything's getting resorted here. So uh, I, I think it's fair to say that it's hard to pick a favorite for the main event out of this group. You see the 7X machine is uh, being asked to take a break. Uh, they Gee, are... I wonder why. <laughs> it, once, once they got hooked, he wasn't lifting. Oh, no. Um, but, you know, we talk about changing conditions when we're at the asphalt racing. And uh, <laughs> there's really no comparison, though, when you're no. at a track a dirt track and so these drivers are going to have completely different convention <laughs> conventions completely different conditions once they get down and uh to main event time yes absolutely so it's going to be fun to watch it's not as hot as it normally is here in bakersfield in the summertime it's usually a comfortable 110 degrees Man, but I'm tonight, you, Dakota Brown is making the suspense build for this restart. He is. <laughs> tonight, it's a nice, what, 83, would oh, you man. say? It's a lot warmer than I ever expected. Yeah, we're definitely in the low 80s. Funny enough, I'm sure there's people watching in the Midwest or the Northeast that are getting completely snowed out. Can't go anywhere because it's snowing. And the reason why we started our racing our time at 3 o'clock was to be done hopefully around 9.30. So it won't get too cold for the fans. Tonight's uh, temperature is projected to be around 50 degrees. And so out here in Southern California, 50 degrees or lower, people don't like to go anywhere. <laughs> Welcome to Southern California. Jeremy Watts not having a great restart there, but Jac Dakota Brown sure did. He's out to the lead. Sider in the second spot, Ratcliffe in third. Watts. Looks like he's trying to get the power to the ground, but the car just doesn't want to go anywhere. And I think it could be the number on the left side. It's just not allowing oh, anything. Oh, here we go. This just doesn't help either. He's battling with the number 19 of Kale Hosfeld. Battle for the fourth position. It's all calm up front. Great side-by-side -side racing. Johnny Wood trying to find a way around these two. He might get them both in one corner. Watts goes wide. Wood takes down the 19 of Hosfeld. He's going to look to the high side now. That was a body five. slam. White flag is in the air. Sidey looks to try to close in on Dakota Brown. Can 
Siders do anything for that lead. He takes a peek to the high side. Dakota Brown runs it into turn number three. Ratcliffe also runs it in as well. Checkered flag for the 15D. Dakota Brown. Siders second. Ratcliffe third. Watts, Wood, and Hosfeld. In the second. Eight lap heat race for the American Sox. Getting ready for the first heat race for the IMCA Modifieds. Now is when we get to start talking about transfer spots. Three spots are the, that's the total. You get three. You finish third, you're in. You finish fourth, not gonna do it. You're gonna have to go through a B main if you're fourth on back. So you're gonna see some fighting and clawing in these heat races, and it's gonna be a doozy. Starting on the front row, the number 11 machine, that's RC Whitwell. To his outside, the number 15 of Brad Pounds. Two really fast drivers, Tommy, but this is a stacked heat race with the 2J, excuse me, 2H of Bobby Hogue in third. All three of those drivers super fast and have gotten wins out here. 51B, that's Brian Clark. And we're going racing. Green flag in the air. Rounding out the starting lineup, the 83, Kellen Chadwick. See the exchange for the lead going on right now. Five of Brett Bennett, the 22D of Ryan Daves. That's everyone in the field. Pound's going to slip up. They're going to go three wide out of turn number four, but the battle for the lead between Hogan and Whitwell. Two great battles to watch for the lead and for third. Bobby Hogue swept the last events out here at the Budweiser Nationals. Took Friday and Saturday. Getting ready for the second heat race for the IMCA Modified, starting on the pole, the number 28H. That'll be Daryl Hughes, the second to his outside the floor of Joey Yantis, the number 174, Ethan Dotson, to his outside, the number 12, driven by B.J. Wild. 101, Randall Davis starts inside row number three to his outside, the number zero of Steve Reeves, and rounding out the field, the number 07, in a very Vegas themed rap, the number 07X, double X I should say, yeah. speaking of Troy I, Something Martin tells Jr. me he, he brought both X's from Vegas. We go green. Oh, Reeves and... Reeves made contact with the 101 of Randall Davis. Both of those two drivers get by Wild. And it looks like Troy Morris was trouble in the 07X. Yeah, that car is completely shut down. No damage at all. He just quit running there. Out of turn number. 
number two. So the battle is for the second spot, and Reeves wants in it. He's on the outside looking in in the fourth position. Oh! Ethan Dodson and Reeves make some heavy contact in the center of one and two. Hey, dude, this is time. If you want to make this main event, this is your way to do it. Ethan just woke up from that one. He's going. Side looking in as well as Troy Morris. That is again another really big surprise out here. We talked about pounds in the last year race. Now Reeves, both drivers who have found success at this racetrack, having trouble. That just goes to show you the competitiveness that we're dealing with today. Oh yeah, a lot of modifieds playing on Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah, I want to add again for anybody watching that we do have DVDs available of this event. You can contact us on our Facebook page if you're interested. We can hook you up. Getting ready for heat race number three, IMCA Modified. Mentioned Chris Crump was sitting in the infield. May have just come out a little bit early. That 23 machine will be starting on the pole in this heat race. Looking to make it into the A-Main event. To the 23's outside, we have the number 5K of Mike Kirby. Row number 2 gives us the 28P of John Piker, a driver we're used to seeing in the Sport Mods, but has recently picked it on up to the IMCA Modifieds. It is outside the 1X of Steve Streeter. Row number 3, the 25 of Craig Castle, the 78S of Matt Schweitzer, and rounding out the field, the 14 of Steve Bowles. Green flag is in the air. Streeter gets shoved up a lane. Loses a couple positions. Piker off the pace on the apron. Interesting. So that's a couple of cars now that have had a random issue where it just shuts off. So that's going to be a B main for John Piker if they're able to get that thing fixed. Battle for second. Crom trying to hold off Schweitzer. Schweitzer in the 78. track right here for the second spot. Yeah, the, the start of this race kind of shuffled everybody in a way that it spread everything out. Just don't tell that to Mike Kirby. He's on a mission. Now, last time we were out here at Bakersfield Speedway, Mike Kirby was up front in the lead, and the rear end started falling out of that number 5K. You want to you talk about an unusual mechanical failure. Funny enough, we reviewed back at the footage from the night before on Friday night, and he had tagged the wall just a little bit. That could have been a lack of maintenance. Side by side into turn one, almost some contact between Bulls and Streeter. They're rubbing off each other out of turn number two. Streeter's gonna just miss the wall. Back up to the second spot. That was all a battle for the fourth spot. Not gonna make a difference when it comes to the B main other than starting position. While, yes, these drivers certainly, it's a race. These guys want to beat each other. A little bit of a bump down the back straight away. White flag in the air for Kirby. This battle for second that we're watching on screen right now, since it's going to be a draw, redraw, really your finishing order right here doesn't make a difference. Correct. If you're on the top three. All you're doing is making 
making sure you're in third or better. That's right. Well, Kirby's going to come out and turn number four, take the victory. Crump will hold off Schweitzer, and those two will also make it straight to the A-Man event. Getting ready for the fourth IMCA Modified Heat Race of Friday night here at Bakersfield Speedway. Take a look at the pit area, see how crowded it is in there. Yep, added and unusual for special events only. Third part of the pit, so an extended area for all the overflow. See Piker getting towed off. So he that team's going to have some work to do. Yeah, driveline issue or something. Not normal to see him pick it up when it's not necessary. Morris and uh, his son both race out here. His son, a mini dwarf driver that we'll likely see tomorrow. Are you talking about Troy Morris that's in the pits and you're showing John Piker? <laughs> because if you are, you're absolutely right. <laughs> but that is a 20 AP of John Piker. You know what? It's okay, we're one to one you know after ups. Next thing you're going to tell me, it's a Friday, not a Saturday. Yep. Well, this track is, after all, sponsored oh, by man. Bakersfield. Oh, man, this is why we have two of us up here. Oh, man. We each have half a brain. Dear Lord. <laughs> Kyle Heckman will start on the pole in the number 11X. He is your IMCA Modified Champion here at the Bakersfield Speedway of 2014 to his outside. The number 33A, Billy Warmsbecker. Inside row number two, the number 99 of Brad Martin. The number 13, that is driven by no one other than Danny O'Keefe. The 5SR, Buddy Shelton, the 07 to his outside of row number three. That'll be driven by Robert Diaz. Diaz, okay. And rounding out the field, the number 24, the West Coast Wild Man, Roger Holder. Tommy, we watched the day after the duel on XN, and we saw Kyle Eckman have a very interesting finish. I look over to the hills of Bakersfield, and I see a guy riding a motorcycle off jumps. Really? You see that? Out of turn number two, he's going up the hill now? Yeah, I do. Okay, that. let's get back to business. In front of us, right on the front straightaway, O'Keefe. Looks that like he's got not the, worst the way you want to start your night. That was mostly cosmetic damage. I've seen if anybody has any major issues. And it really was O'Keefe that had the worst end of everything. Battle for the transfer spot over in turn number two. Buddy Shelton. He had help. The first time he 
all by himself. I mean, do you see all any significant own. damage on this car? Maybe I, right rear suspension? They're going to have to go through that rear suspension because he flat pounded the wall at a turn number four, all with his right rear. Cosmetic can be fixed, but how much damage is under those quarter panels? is a question. They're going to be probably pretty busy here between now and the main event. First heat race of the mini stocks. Thanksgiving Thunder. Grrr, nope. Nope. That didn't he fly. faked me. Flagman faked us. Brady Bell. Brady Bell not playing nice on that start. <laughs> or three wide. That's for sure. Under yellow. So let's go through the starting lineup and I'll fill in what I was listening for. The number 20 machine, Justin McPherson, starting on the pole. To his outside, Tommy already mentioned him. The 5K of Brady Bell, I believe, may be one of the busiest drivers this weekend, division-wise. He'll be in three different divisions. All weekend long. All weekend long. Row number two, the 48S. That is Steven Settlemeyer. Mentioned the Settlemeyer name earlier in the American stocks. That was Chris Settlemeyer. Tina Bell, the number 29 machine. It's the only champion. Yeah, and it's only appropriate she starts behind Brady Bell. Good point. You can see she's shoving Brady. <laughs> exactly, exactly. The seven machine runner-up in the championship, that's Gary Spiller Jr. On the outside of him was the 14 machine, that is Watley. We had a different name written down, but as far as we know, it's Willie Watley driving the machine. And rounding out the field, the number 19 of Chris Dave's green flag is in the air and side-by-side side for the lead. No transfers out of this one. It's a complete heat race. Oh boy, McPherson. Still hanging in there with Brady Bell. Battle for the lead up here. That's the only battle on track right now. <laughs> it's fun seeing Brady Bell in one of these. When we're going to see him in a high-powered uh, oh. street stock. Tina Bell, I think, was trying to get off track. Or arc it. One or the other. No, that car looked like it quit running down the front straightaway. I could have been talking about the battery arcing. Mm -hmm. Could be. Could be. Yeah. Settlemeyer now moved up to the third spot. Gary Spiller, Jr. Keeping an eye on Tina Bell, but that car is back. Looking like it's running like it should. Spiller, Tommy, kind of a heartbreaker for him. He was so close to a championship this year. He was. Got in a battle with a few other drivers, and Tina Bell made a run like no other and made that one single car pass to determine the champion. Yeah, it was a last lap pass. All the drama that you look for in a championship, it was here. See the battle for third starting to brew up. Steven Saddlemeyer trying to hold off Spiller in the seven machine. And here comes Tina Bell to the high side. These two no strangers Woo. battling each other. Do you think Tina was just trying to give Brady a chance? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, because she is storming through this track right now. Now we're only halfway. Lime number four. How about this number 20 machine, Justin McPherson, holding on to the lead. The first time I've seen this driver at this racetrack that I can remember. There he is down the back straight away into turn number three. And Tommy, how about a fun little story about this 14 machine down the front straight away? Oh, I'd love to hear the story coming from you especially. See that 14 machine on track? Oh, we're seeing it. Just a couple weeks ago, that very same car slam drafted me in a race going through a turn, so I took him out. <laughs> and this is a true story now. I took, I took we, out that car. Now, you and me raced bang up type cars, smash up derby type cars. Yeah. So what was this car doing in a race of ours? It was racing in an enduro. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? To give him credit, I took him out, but he saved it. He sure did. And I don't know how he saved it because he went through all sorts of lanes of traffic to hold onto that car. At a turn number four, the 20 machine, Justin McPherson wins the heat race. You see trouble over in turn number two between Spiller and Settlemeyer. Those two were side by side. I imagine that it might have just been a slip up and those two got sideways. I don't see any heavy damage on either car, not even flat tires. So Brady Bell second. Oh, oh there, there the flat oh, tire. There, he, yeah, I should have figured. Yep. There, there had to at least be one. Take a look. Can't really see it on this view, but it had a flat right rear. Getting ready for the second mini stock heat race of the weekend. Of the night, I should say. I should correct myself and say of the night. Mini stocks racing here tonight. 
So one to go on the flag stand. The 13, starting on point. Kyra Holder. She's rolled over once this year. Oh yeah. And number 48 to the second on the outside of row number one. That is Trent Morley. The number 92 of Gene Glover. Two is outside. The double X machine of Mark Irwin. Normally drives American stocks. He totaled that thing out in a race here about two, three months ago. Rounding out the field, the number 70, Roy Maynard Jr. Oh my goodness. And green flag is out. A bit of a stack up here at the start. Hey, what's nice about Irwin being in that XX machine is he's already made it clear that if he has any chance of winning, he'll destroy the car for it. Well, like we saw in the uh, XN Facebook post, those trophies got a lot of these drivers' attention. I'm pretty sure the tro yeah. And Irwin said he go he will go at all costs to get one of those, put it in the living room. He doesn't care what the car looks like before or after the event. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know how much worse it can look. <laughs> can you tell by the number? <laughs> you know when, when you go to a uh, junkyard yeah, and they uh, put X's on the doors to show that this is a car that's just no good anymore? Yeah, the scrap cars get I'm X's. pretty sure that... <laughs> you think he pulled that one from the scrap pile? I hope so. Got a uh -oh, problem on the front for Kyra Holder. Holder not able to get it going. Yellow flag is out, sitting dead stick on the front straightaway. So Tommy, another driver though, having a really good run that we're not used to. Trent Morley in the 48. That's a good looking mini stock though, I gotta say that. Uh, Holders! Try oh, she was so close. So close. We'll be back for the restart. Restart lap number two. Morley, Irwin, Maynard, and Glover. Your four cars remaining on this track. And we're back to green. See some tire rub out of the double X machine. You know, for how much crap we're giving that car, it's actually trying to close in on your leader right now. Trent Morley getting some pressure. That car might just scoop the rear tires off the ground there if it gets <laughs> into the back of it. <laughs> it's a shovel coming through. You see Morley down on the low side. The rest of the field working in that high groove, riding right at the cushion. Morley though, seems like he gains everything he can down the straightaways. Irwin keeps his foot on the gas in the corners. And it's a good race right here. It's about an even race, you just see difference of speeds. Also rear wheel drive versus front wheel drive. Irwin never having to lift, keep the wheels turned to the left, front wheel drive pulling him out of the corners. Here comes Irwin looking to the outside. You see the white gloves of Morley, loving those gloves, because you get to see how much work he's doing. Staying in front of the scrapyard car of Mark Irwin. Irwin sticking to the high side, staying to his roots. I think that XX machine is hustling in the field. Everyone probably did the same thing we did. Oh no, we got a, a big puff of smoke in the center of the corner. Maybe he's throwing up the smoke. Screen. I think he just hit the NOS button. I think he might have. <laughs> he might have poured a can of sea foam in that motor, man. <laughs> I can't imagine. I feel bad for XN viewers right oh, now. Oh no! What is that? <laughs> They probably tuned in to see something great, but congratulations to Trent Morley for staying out in front of that double X. Mark Irwin, and it's a great run for Mark Irwin, because he has a car in pieces at his chop. I don't know if he has more tape or spray paint on that paint job. <laughs> but he was able to come out here, borrow a friend's mini stock to race out here. So cool story for him. It's all in the front end of that double X. Heat race number one for the hobby stocks. Getting ready to go, Thanksgiving Thunder. If you ask yourself, that 114 machine looks familiar. It should. Because that is Rich Denman. We've already seen him on track already, Tom. Mm -hmm. You know what they say about Denman. He likes to race. 
To his outside, the number 13, that is Jackie Wood. Row number two gives us the 2X of Jimmy the Shoe Irwin and the 18 of Kevin Collier. 87, that's Kenny Christensen. And to his outside, the 61 of Robbie Whitwer. Row number four to the inside, the 94, that's Colby Quinton. And rounding out the field, the 73J. Tommy, we're going to go with Christy Shearer. Yes. That's what I think. Green flag! Hold on to your hats. I'll bet you a side of blue cheese that that 73 is Christy Shearer. <laughs> okay, you're on. <laughs> they tried four wide right over in turns one and two. Still side by side, and this transfer spot's probably going to be a big one to talk about here. Collier to the inside. Being that Collier is in the fourth position, well now he just worked his way into third. And a transfer spot. Kevin Collier won the Bakersfield Speedway Budweiser Nationals Hobby Stock Race. All three wide. This is going to be tight down the front straightaway. And it's still a little bit of beating and banging. Some uh, dented door panels at the end of this one. The 61, Robbie Whitwer, we're used to seeing him oh in the boy. modified. <laughs> Slammed it in there. Dinman gonna get shoved on the track. The officials are uh, shaking their finger at Whitwer, saying we're watching you. But uh, maybe a little bit of uh, loss of page patience in that one, I would guess. Absolutely. 13 machine, Jackie Wood. Not one of our regular hobby stock drivers out here, but holding on to the lead over Jimmy Irwin, one driver that you always have to keep an eye on whenever you're watching racing out here in that 2X machine. Collier, though, like Tommy said, got the victory in the last Nationals event. He was super fast and always is. Battle for fourth behind him. Whitworth and Christensen have a little bit of a door slam out of turn number four. Do you think Rich Denman might oh, remember boy. what Whitworth did? I don't think he's going to forget. I don't know if he can. Oh, how about this Shear getting into the bumper, or I should say the quarter panel of Quinton. There is some aggressive driving happening right now. There's more damage on the front end of Colby Quinton's car though. Battle for the th second spot. Shear pulling it off the racetrack. White flag is in the air for Jackie Wood in the 13 machine. Battle for second. Oh, a lot of smoke out of Whitworth out of turn number four. He's probably not going to lift. But out of turn number four, it will be Jackie Wood in the 13 machine. Jimmy Irwin and Kevin Collier make it, but this battle for fourth is insane. Who's it going to be? It's going to be Robbie Whitworth out of turn number four, Christensen and Colby Quinton. I don't think the drivers behind Whitworth can see. No. But that is not a good sign, Tommy. You can see the smoke coming out from under the hood. Yeah. So it's either going to be a long night for Whitworth or a very short weekend. Number 61. Wait, Literally so smoke. do you think Denman has anything to say to... If he could find Whitworth yeah, exactly. in all the smoke. I, I think, think he's he trying his, to right now. He might have got his revenge enough. Uh, no, he'll probably do this. There it is. I knew, I knew he'd remember. <laughs> hey, you know what they say about Denman? He never forgets. Getting ready for another hobby stock heat race out here at the Bakersfield Speedway. And this one could have... With the amount of cars that just pulled in, we mm -hmm. should be in B main two. I believe we are there. So top three, definitely something to watch out for. The 33 Robert Swearing, in the 2Z of Kevin Irwin, the 70, John McKinley, the 21, Kyle Wood, the 52, Perry Alderman, the 78 Fireball Cody Chambers, the 30 Brent Hosfeld, and the 23 of a driver that we don't have a name for. And a 78 make that a 79. Green flag is in the air. My bad, yes, you're right. Oh, and some contact at the start. No harm, no foul. Battle for the third spot. McKinley wants in. Wood holding off. See the 38. Matt Hagio. He's going to be one you're going to probably see work his way through. Alderman. Slide. Yeah, Doug in that 38 machine. That's a, a fun multicolored car. Two Hagios race now here. Matt is in the 28H machine that we'll see. And one car off the track, it's the 23, not off the track, maybe enough though, to the apron. Over in turn.
Here number two, you see him down low. And look at this battle for fourth. Doug Hagio gets by the fireball. Cody Chambers works his way up into the fifth position. He's looking on that 70. John McKinley, he is there taking a peek down low. Also up ahead of him just a little bit. Wood trying to get around Swearingen. Kevin Irwin leading this one. Has about five car lanes between first and second. But the, the best battle to watch is right here for fourth. The driver trying to hold off Wood for the second position, that 33 of Swearingen. We saw him last year, just about exactly a year ago, drive. <laughs> he I don't even know how to explain it. He didn't drive. He actually crashed through billboards down the back straightaway in Porterville. Rocky Hill Speedway. McKinley with a bobble. Here comes Doug Haggio. Yeah, and that was a really crucial bobble for McKinley. He was closing in on Wood, and that would have been for a transfer spot. Doug Haggio to his inside now. Oh, out to the wall. Go swearing it. And into the side, and we got a big hit in the center. And more contact. And that... Well, that was a wheel shot. wheel shot, and that can easily, Tommy, jack up the rear end. Looked like Schweringen just went a little wide. We've seen some modifieds do it here tonight. Yep, got a little wide, made some contact to the 21 of Kyle Wood. All I got to say is thank God there were no billboards out of turn four. Yes, that, he would have crashed for that one too. No, but uh, that's going to be a lot of work for that 33. McKinley actually got very lucky, and it didn't look to have done I don't know. an extreme amount of damage. He's over there at the pit grandstands. Oh, yeah, showing, you see the, uh, doing a little team. show and tell. Yeah. yeah. But that 33 took a wheel shot in that uh, one. The 79 was another car that got collected, not to the extent of McKinley. No, he, he or, tanks, of course, swearing it. He tank slapped that one as it went by, so. Literally, I don't see any more damage than it already has on <laughs> 79. Oh, Tommy, the 33 machine might not be done. It might not be. The fact that it's driving is your first good sign. But it, it doesn't look to be crabbing either. Oh, no, but you can see that rear end moving around a bit. I don't think he's done, Tommy. No, he shouldn't be. <laughs> you got... If you can make it into the feature, I'm you've got some time. I'm impressed. Anything can And happen. actually, that's a really good point. Right now, his biggest thing is getting into that feature because that'll buy him an hour or two. Yes. If he isn't able to transfer here now, he has a lot of work to do in a little amount of Look time. Look at that damage. Let's see. I've seen derby cars with much worse. You know what? I mean, it was a wheel shot. But it might have hit more on the door than it did on the wheel. Well, they're going to take a look at it in the pits. Either way, he was the cause of the caution. So one and done rule, which means... Yeah, yeah. Bring so up. actually, throw out everything we just said. Yeah, we're screwed up. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, if anything, at least now, they're like, well, that'll save us five minutes. Time to work on it. But uh, after that lengthy caution, a big hit here on the front straightaway. We are going to restart with two laps to go. And this reopens the door for that transfer spot. Now McKinley sits in the, the third position. Still really no idea how that car is going to handle at full speed, but Hagio's been on him this whole race. I was going to say, that 30H, Doug Hagio has been giving the 70 a lot of attention. Here we go. We're going to restart this one with two laps to go. Green flag is out. Irwin, Wood, and McKinley. We'll keep an eye on this transfer spot. A little bit of smoke. Maybe some tire rub out of the 30H. Doug Hagio looks to the inside of McKinley. Battle for the transfer spot. White flag flying. And it's going to be a lap to do. Field out and sword out. Who's going? Who's staying? Here it comes. Haggio with the move to the inside moves into the feature event. Through turns number three and four. Checkered flag. Kevin Irwin oh, and no. Wood spinning out. And that will allow McKinley back into the A main event. Can Kyle you believe Wood. that? Turn number four. Kyle Wood looping it on the exit of turn number four, and it looked to be more than just handling. 
he could have some car yeah, issues. You know, he's, he's pulling off the glove. Yeah, he looks to be not the happiest camper right now. Because he was in spot to oh, just yeah. drive. His, his night was, he was ready to go. 50 feet away from the start finish line. Needs a push off, maybe just doesn't even want to bother trying to start it back up. He might fix it with a gallon and a match. A gallon of gas and a match. So. <laughs> we'll see. The final heat race for Hobby Stocks here, Bakersfield Speedway. Thanksgiving Thunder again for anyone interested. We will be selling DVDs of this event. It'll have all the main event action on it. Go ahead and contact us on Facebook. Actually, you can look on Facebook because we have that new cool tab. That's right. That uh, you can click and order your DVDs. Order right there on Facebook. Uh, just so we can put a face to a name, we'll get through the starting lineup here in a second. But if you look down, walking down the uh, front straight away, you'll see Mark Irwin driving the XX Mini Stock. Oh, we gotta look at this. The Our XX favorite Mini, mini stock. stock. Where is he at? Right there. There he is. How he even fits in a Mini Stock is beyond me. Especially that one. Out <laughs> of turn number four, Manzella and the Zero Four Machine gonna lead us to the green. Now that Zero Four Machine during hot laps had some mechanical problems, so be curious to see if anything picks up here. Car sliding back a little bit. The 12H, our leader, Brent Hosfeld, he had a great run during the Nationals. I thought for a second he was gonna get it. Collier got him there the last few laps. Three wide into turn number one. In the middle of it, it's the Johnson. Tommy feeling pretty good that that's Chad. That's what I believe we wrote down from my phone. We did. Good call. Oh, oh contact Luke with Dodd. Dodd. And that could be a flat tire for the 26, or maybe just had to jump on the brakes to keep it off the wall, but that's a battle for the transfer spot. Matt Agio on the 14H. I lied when I said it was a 28. Flat earlier. left rear tire for the number 26 of Chad Johnson. I think he's done, though, nope. until they give him that mechanical black. Yeah, it's not going to do anything, though. It's one of... Oh! Richard Green in the T-73 going to give him a door slam and rounding out this field, the 11W of Marshall Weaver. So the battle up front is calm. Is there a flat tire on that 26 machine? Yes. Because that thing is not giving up. I think, I think he's figured out a line that doesn't require a left rear tire. Either that or it's incredibly low. It might actually be building up some pressure a little bit. I don't know. Oh, for the lead, Luke Dodd door slams Hosfeld. And you heard that one pop. Is that another tire? Could be. Oh, we might see some tempers start no, to flare. No, no, that one's good, it looks like. Maybe I'm, see maybe I'm seeing things. Maybe the battle for fourth right now, it's Johnson and Manzella. Yeah, I think you're I think you're seeing things, man. It could be. Well, the wife like in the air for Luke Dodd in the 98 machine. Showing he's out here for one thing, and that's to win it. Trouble for Hagio. He was in a transfer spot in the 14H. He's gonna stop out of turn number four. And this could bring out a yellow. It will bring out a yellow. We're gonna have a one-lap dash to solve this one and see who's gonna make it. So Hagio falls out. That will move Johnson back into third, a transfer spot. It moves Manzella into fourth, one spot out. And that's exact one lap restart. Green and white in the air. Who's going to make it into the A main event? Dodd, Hosfeld, and Johnson looking good right now. And if things end the way they are out of turn number four, it will be Dodd. of the drivers have to go through the B. Let's get through the starting lineup for the first Sportmind Heat Race here on Friday night. Bakersfield, Thanksgiving Thunder on the pole. The winner of the Budweiser Nationals, the last big event out here at Bakersfield Speedway. That'll be the 32 of Tina McGowan. To her outside is the number 17 T of Brian Terry. To his inside, the number, or inside row number two, the 14, Eric Manning. C9, Chad Reckenbach. The number four starts inside row number three. That'll be Buddy Shelton. Green flag is out, 84, Kyle Griffin. 128 driven by. That's actually a new car on her sheet. <laughs> and the 33 Kel Kanky from Fraser Park. Out of the lead up front, Terry and McGowan. McGowan will take the lead out of turn number four. One of the most competitive divisions to hit this track at any point in the year. When you
you put a Nationals, a big trophy up for grabs, it's going to ramp up that much more. Rickenback holds on to the third position. Like we talked about right now, we will treat this as if there is a transfer spot. If there's no B-Main laner, then everyone's going to go three wide and almost contact. Oh, there is some contact. Buddy Shelton. Stout car this weekend. That's the same as the last time we saw that machine on track. And here we go. E race number two from the Sport Mods. The 28P. Oh, the 74 holds onto it, and he's going to ride on the apron down the back straightaway. Flying down the back straightaway. That's the reason why they call him Wild Wayne Dotson. was featured on Randy Cam in Rome. Yeah, I did. I think it got with Randy Will driving thing. With, Wan with Randy driving it. So there's a battle for the transfer spot. Dawson holding off these drivers. Your battle for the lead involves the 28P of Zach Forrester and the 51 of Cruz Griffith. Some contact over here in turn number two, the 4B and the 13M. Uh, yeah, one of the wheel covers went flying off on those cars. 74 Wayne Dotson mentioned him sitting in the third spot. The 13 of Ethan Dotson. I believe that car was on asphalt racing last weekend. It sure was. Out at Kern County Raceway Park, they had a big old King of the Wing sprint car show that spawned over three days at three different tracks, Madeira, Irwindale, and KCRP. And at KCRP, they also had what they call spec mods out there. They're pretty much sport mods on asphalt. He's outside of a transfer spot. The 5A Austin Fry pulling it into the infield. 4B Bruce Nelson and the 13 machine. That's the 13M of Matt Mayo. So good battle up here in the front spot. Bruce Griffith trying to look to the inside for the lead under the 28 feet of Forrester. Tommy, as a race car driver, you know you want to win whatever race you get into, but how much are you going to risk knowing you're in the show? I wouldn't. White flag is out. But at the same point, for Griffith, the lead is right in front of him. He can score a heat race win here tonight. He's looking for it out of turn number four. It's going to be Zach Forrester holding on to the 28P, grabbing the victory. So Dobson holds on to the third spot. That'll put him in the feature if there is a B man here tonight. We're probably going to find out if we see another car show up. It's guaranteed, yeah. We getting ready for another Sportmont heat race. 
Flagman at the ready, giving him to one to go. The 5K, Brenda Kirby to her outside, the number 93. That is driven by Brady Bell. You remember that name in the mini stocks? Well, oh, yeah. He is in the sport mod. The 12 machine, driven by James Cecil. To James Cecil's outside is the number 5 machine. That is Jeremy Hoff inside row number 3. The 63, driven by Aaron Farrell. The 97 of Gary Dutton and the 117 of Tim Paddock. We go green. Contact on the start. Oh, more, more contact. contact. Dutton and Cecil get involved. Three wides. Dutton wasted no time. Cecil having to back out. Look at Dutton and that 97 machine flying up towards the third position. He might make it from the wall into the feature. And he's opening laps. Cecil struggling though on the number 12 machine. Dutton with a run, he makes it into third. So into the feature straight if he keeps it from third on up. That'll move Hoff and the number five back into the fourth spot. Brady Bell with a commanding lead so far. Yeah, exactly. He's actually walking away from Brenda Kirby in the 5K. Brenda scored a victory at Santa Maria Speedway not too long ago. There's some contact in for number three. Oh, oh, Cecil, he's been trying to do that for a few laps yeah, now. Yeah, it's been a heat race just working. <laughs> and why not? He hits the wall, might as well hit Tim Paddock. We saw Cecil take a really big hit at Santa Maria a while back yeah. in a heat race when he was leading. Completely bit the frame on the car. You know, James is one of those drivers that you talk about luck not... It's kind of a rarity to see luck on that driver's side. For the second spot, here comes Dutton to the inside of Brenda Kirby. And gets by Kirby with a bobble on the high side. White flag is out for Brady Bell and Tim Buey's number 93. Kirby way wide, this could be a transfer spot. She's got to get on it. She's got to get moving, stay ahead of Hoff. And that five machine as well as the 63 of Farrell. Brady Bell takes the checker flag, Dutton crosses the line, and Brenda Kirby with a huge bobble out of turn four still hangs on to the third spot. That was a close one for Kirby. <laughs> I, uh, that wall was coming up quick. All right, so. I just realized something. We are about to get busy. So folks, we'll be back. We'll hook you up with the track PA. We'll be back for B-Main event action.